from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you feel the wind that last night? I slept with my window open and I thought to myself, oh, God planned this just for Pentecost Sunday because, you know, I think that way. But that wind was blowing. Now, do you know what it means when you get a really big wind like that, what that means about the weather? Hmm? Change is a coming. Yes, indeed. In fact, I substituted in an earth science class one day, and the lesson that day was on just this subject. You get the wind because you have a pressure gradient. You have two pressure systems that are running into each other, and it creates wind. I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> but it tells us that change is a coming. And so when we hear today's story about the coming of the Holy Spirit, it is manifest in two ways. Now, the first one is a great big wind, just like we had last night. And we know what that means. That means change is a coming. And the second way was with tongues of fire. Now, guys, don't you wish you were invited to that party? I mean, like, when was the last time you came to church and we had tongues of fire? Actually, I had a church that burned, and so we did one Sunday have tongues of fire, and it was not fun. But I mean, this kind of party type of celebration tongues of fire. Like, it hasn't happened. And we don't really associate that much with church. You know, we sort of associate sitting quietly and not talking out loud and not doing anything dumb. You know, that's what we think about church. Not tongues of fire. Well, this is a story about God's third stage in his relationship with the world. God created the world, the great divine creator, and out of love for the world, God said, they need to better understand how much I love them. And so a part of God separated himself and became Jesus. And he was God in the flesh, teaching us about love. When the time came for Jesus to die, then God moved into stage three of the great divine plan. And he raised Jesus right up out of that tomb by the power of the Holy Spirit and then sent the Spirit to us so that we too would have that power at our command. So we are now in stage three of God's divine plan for the creation that God made. Now, all these people were gathered in Jerusalem in a room, but they were from lots of different places. And by the way, excellent job on the reading. That's the toughest one we do every year. So they didn't speak the same language with each other. And yet somehow when that wind blew through and the tongues of fire came out, they couldn't understand each other. It was like the earliest social media platform was the first Pentecost. Nowadays, we use Twitter. Now, anybody here have no idea what Twitter is? Good. Because, what? All right. Well, then I know what I need to explain. That sounds good. Twitter is a way in which anybody in the world can comment on an event or a person. Is that a good explanation, guys? All right. You have to know what the hashtag is. A hashtag is the number sign. And, and you get a Twitter account, and you set up a hashtag that says what the subject is. And then anybody can put up that hashtag and make a comment. So we're going to practice being Pentecostal Twitter people. So we're going to start with. Easter, because that gets us grounded. So what if we use for the hashtag, Jesus is risen? Good hashtag for Easter, right? Tells us what the subject is. What would the message be? Now your message is really short, 140 characters, right? So what can we write in our message under hashtag, Jesus is risen? There you go. Hallelujah works really well. Hallelujah. Hashtag Jesus is risen. Or how about this one? OMG went to the tomb. He is not there. Hashtag he is risen. Okay? Or what about I think 
they stole the body. Hashtag, don't know where he is. Okay? So that's Easter. Now you get Twitter. All right? So we can talk to people all over the globe using a Twitter account. So now we're going to move to Ascension. Ascension is that day when, although Jesus is risen, now Jesus assumes his place with God. I don't know. Let me say up. Heaven isn't up, but we'll take them up. Okay? So Jesus ascends to the Father. So we need a hashtag for that. What do you want to use? Hashtag going home. How about that? Going home? Does that work? So what would the message be? See, now all of you are practicing telling the story of Jesus by doing these Twitter things. I just want you to know. You little evangelists who think you can't tell the story of Jesus. We're going to talk about ascension, and the hashtag is going home. So what could a message be? BRB, Jesus. Now you have to know the abbreviations. BRB means? Be right back. Be right back. Jesus. <laughs> hashtag going home. <laughs> All right. Or it could be from somebody like me who said, I was talking to him, then he was gone, don't know what's going on. Hashtag going home. So that's how a Twitter account works. Now we're ready for Pentecost. We need a hashtag for Pentecost. What? How would we characterize Pentecost out there in the world so people could come? Come on, be creative. I got you warmed up. Tons of flame. Tons of flame. Hashtag tons of flame. That'll work. Very good. There's another one. So we get the flames in. Can we have one for wind? Doves are flying. Doves are flying? Okay. Hashtag doves are flying. We got it. So now we have our hashtags. What are we going to say about this event of Pentecost? Universal language. Universal language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because everybody could understand everybody. Universal language. We're going to use the fire one. Hashtag tongues of fire. That'll work well. Very good. What about... Change is a coming, hashtag, doves are flying. There you go. What else is going on in Pentecost? The party of the millennia. Sorry you missed it. Hashtag tongues of fire, because the tongues of fire always capture my imagination. I mean, did they bounce over people's heads? So now we're warmed up. Now we have some sense of Pentecost. It's a time when God is, with a big wind, moving change into this world and moving us into the third stage of God's plan for the world. Well, what is God planning? Exactly. What are the changes that are coming? Well, now we go back to Jesus and find out what it is Jesus did. Jesus taught us about how much God loves us. And he showed us how much God loves us by healing people and forgiving people and frankly inviting people to dinner that nobody else wanted to have to dinner, you know. And now the wind of change is blowing right through. <coughs> and Jesus is no longer with us. And what we have is the Spirit. What do we do with the Spirit? Well, a spirit we can't see, but we can feel. A spirit, this is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, so it's powerful. It's a powerful spirit. This spirit is as much God as Jesus was God, is as much God as God is God. Okay? So we're not playing around here with some draft from an old window. This is the Holy Spirit, and it's amongst us, and its primary job is to gather in people, Jesus' people. Jesus' people who want to follow the way that Jesus teaches, who want to be like Jesus is, who want to know the Father better. The, the job of this Holy Spirit is to pull us all in. The word church comes from the Greek word ekklesia. 
And the, the end part, lacia, is a verb which means called out. And the ek in the front means out, called and out. So we are, as the church, the called out ones. Called out to do what? Called out to tell the story of Jesus to everyone who's never heard it. Peter stands right up. And he says, look, we had a prophet, his name was Joel, and he told you this time was coming. There will be a time when young men will dream dreams and old men will see visions. And everybody, women and children, young and old, men and boys, all of them are going to be telling the story of Jesus. And that's where we are today. We are in that place where the Holy Spirit is calling us together. Martin Luther taught in his explanation to the third article, I'd ask you guys this question, but I'm smart enough not to do that. <laughs> Martin Luther said in his explanation to the third article of the Creed that the Holy Spirit calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies his holy church. You thought you decided to go to church this morning. You thought when that alarm off came out, it was your decision. Oh, no. The Holy Spirit's been calling you to come, to gather, to be one in the body of Christ, to be strengthened through God's word, to be fed on the meal, so that when we start our Twitter account here at Luther Memorial, you can tell the whole world what it's about, who this Jesus is, what this Jesus does, and how the Holy Spirit is moving in your life and in the world. Because now God is calling us to be the ones who heal and teach and forgive and make peace. Now we are in that stage of God's plan where it is Jonathan and Daniel and Jack who are taking their place, speaking God's word. Okay, it is really easy for you to say, this is a neat story, and it is, it's a neat story, but really, that was then, and this is now, and I haven't seen a party like this at church in a long time. You can say, well, yeah, that was Peter. Come on, Peter got to know Jesus and walked with him, so of course Peter went out and talked about Jesus, but I'm not Peter. You could say, well, of course they had this powerful Holy Spirit. They were all there. They blew through the windows. There were tongues of fire. But I don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh, really? Oh, really? Because I believe there was a time in your life when, in fact, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to give you a little hint as to when that might have been. When did you get the Spirit? Guys, baptism, you got it. At baptism, you receive water and the Spirit. That Spirit's been with you all along. The thing is, we don't trust it. We don't trust that if the Spirit calls me to say something to somebody, like, um, boy, that sounds sad. Can I pray for you? We don't trust that the Spirit is going to make us look like anything other than an idiot. We don't trust that if the Holy Spirit calls us into a place, that in fact there is work that needs to be done there, and God needs each one of us to do it. We don't trust that. We don't trust that if we step out in faith, following what we believe is the guiding of the Holy Spirit, that we will be blessed. We don't believe that although the scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit has gifted each one of us for ministry, each and every person here, no matter how young or how old, each and every one of you has a gift that God has given to you, that the Spirit has called out of you, 
in order to do ministry. Oh no, I don't have any gifts. I don't know how to do nothing. I don't know nothing about birth and no babies for those who have watched God with him. Oh, people, let us trust the power of this spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the spirit that calls out new life wherever we are. It's the spirit that calls out new life in us. Helps us change. Helps us grow into people of faith. Helps us tell the story. So at the eight o'clock store at the eight o'clock service, we use the hashtag feel the wind. Today I want you to feel the wind. When you feel the wind, think to yourself, what is it God is calling me to do? And then, a little bit, let's trust that that spirit can get you through.